Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 544. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old. And here in sunny Sydney, Australia, it is Wednesday, the 23rd of October. It's Tuesday. It's not Wednesday. It can't be Wednesday yet. I have not had my dinner. Okay, welcome to another show of Anglican Unscripted. Before we get too far along, please like the show on YouTube and Facebook. Share it with your friends, especially now if you're an Australian and you look outside and you see kangaroos, this episode is for you. This is a down under episode because we have David Old. Uh, or, the even show... if you're, or even if you're even if you're Australian and you can't see a kangaroo, you can still like it. I thought that was just a normal animal you just saw outside your windows. Most people think we just look outside our window and we see deer. It's not the way it happens, but it's an assumption of North America. And please, the comments continue the show. Uh, once I click the off button, we go down and we read the comments. We comment the comments. We like the comments because that's love where the, the comments. Yeah, we do. That's where the conversation continues. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff that's been happening down under. Uh, if you've been watching Anglican Inc. or you've been going to davidold.net, you know that uh, Archbishop Glenn Davies uh, gave a speech to General Synod this last week and basically said, listen, if you guys are going to cause trouble, are going to try and change doctrine, are going to try and change the rubrics of what's been happening down here in, um, in this province, forget it. Just leave. Now, I'm saying a little yeah. more cursely than he did, but I thought, David, you could bring well, us up to, 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 to speed on how it really worked. Well, it was it was the Diocesan Synod of Sydney, not the General Synod. That is yet to come next year. We'll talk about that in a moment. It is mm -hmm. Synod season here in, in Australia. We're well, uh, well into it. And at uh, about a week and a bit ago at his last ever presidential address, he's retiring next year. Uh, Archbishop uh, Glenn Davies uh, spoke about episcopacy and, and what it means and, and, and what the prayer book says about it and, and, and the Bible uh, and so on. And of course, having said that, he could not fail but to address the issue we have at the moment where we have uh, bishops in the Anglican Church of Australia who are now openly seeking to change the long established doctrine of the, of the, of the church on, on marriage. Uh, and of course, the crisis moment here was the Diocese of Wangaratta passing at their synod a motion to allow the blessing of persons in uh, same-sex marriages. Uh, they ended up not quite having exactly the, the service that they thought they were going to have. It's gone off to our, our, our appeal court, the, uh, the appellate tribunal. I think I've seen at least eight different questions that have been sent to the appellate tribunal about, about that issue. But it has it has kicked it off. It has moved us into a different phase. Uh, we've got a bishop now who's openly uh, rejected the agreements he's made with other bishops. Uh, we're looking at a similar motion this coming weekend at the Diocese of Newcastle. Uh, I'm hearing that the Diocese of Wallach also, in its, uh, its, its synod um, will be uh, will be considering something similar, although they're a much smaller diocese, and I've not, not yet uh, been able to see the, the business paper uh, to confirm that. And so it's all it's all coming to a head. And, and Archbishop Davis said, "Look, uh, if you're going to be a bishop and you make certain promises." Uh, we just expect you to keep them. The, the constitution of the Anglican Church is very clear on where our doctrine and, and, and our, our forms of worship come from. They come from the Third Nine Articles. They, they're, they're, in, they're in the Book of Common Prayer, uh, all those sorts of things. Uh, none of the sort of the wishy-washy stuff that other provinces have where, you know, we recognize the Third Nine Articles as a historical document. No, they still are our standard. So if you're an authentic Australian Anglican, that's the position you should take. And Archbishop Davies just said, look, if you don't want to be an authentic Australian Anglican leader, and that's particularly what he was talking talking about the bishops, then go and start your own thing. Well, hold, hold on here. I'm looking at davidold.net, and I see that there's an Anglican priest in Sydney who performed a same-sex blessing. Explain Yes, yeah, so a couple of a couple of days ago we, we broke. Uh, and it's really interesting, Kevin, when I did the first of these uh, last year, I think earlier this year, and said, look, oh, here, here it is, it was huge news. It's almost becoming Derry Gurr now. Uh, so we have um, this lady, her name is uh, Lisa Ahuja. She's actually a former Episcopalian, ordained an, initially uh, in the United States. Thank you for sending her over, guys. <laughs> Listen, uh, we didn't she want was, her. <laughs> yeah, she was the chaplain. Um, her last position was as chaplain of um, Perth College, which is an Anglican college 
in Perth, on the west coast of Australia, in the Diocese of Perth, which is thoroughly uh, liberal. Uh, it seems that that position has come to an end, and we did establish last night, and I put a correction on, on the piece, that she is no longer under a license from the Archbishop of Perth, Kay Goldsworthy. Um, and she came across to Sydney and carried out a, a same-sex blessing. It's a quasi-wedding. Uh, they talk about it as a celebration of marriage. They talk about it as a wedding. They had a certificate, but it seems there was no declaration and no actual formal marriage. Uh, that may have been done somewhere else. Uh, she so doesn't, at, uh, I, at the end of the liturgy, she does not say, and I pronounce you man and man. No, or I pronounce it's you very woman interesting. Woman. We don't have that. Okay. We don't have that. Okay. We have lots of the other elements, and I've outlined them all um, on my piece. I chose not to put the video up itself, even though I've got the whole service, uh, because uh, they have an adopted child, and that child, uh, yeah, this, this gay couple. And that, yeah, you don't want to put that up. That's just not right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some screen grabs, which I think just give you the essence um, of it, and nobody has yet challenged uh, 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 what we said about about that service. But there it is again. It was done in a non-denominational chapel, yet nevertheless done in the diocese of Sydney, uh, the sort of place um, where it really would be uh, polite. I think any place, actually, you, if you go to another diocese and carry out some formal ceremonial function as an Anglican minister, uh, then the right and proper thing to do, of course, is always to at least uh, present yourself uh, to the bishop, uh, if not to, to ask permission. Uh, of course, none of that uh, was done, and uh, of course, it would not have been granted, would it, for, for an action like that. Uh, so it's not the, uh, it's nothing for the Archbishop of Perth to worry about now. Uh, she's gone. Uh, apparently, but it is a, just another example of, of the sort of thing that's happening uh, and is um, and is going on to happen. Uh, and I'm hearing stories all the time uh, of these things, so I expect for us to see more of those. Uh, and it's all just going to build up the tension. We're going to have some more dioc diocese voting, and it's all building up the tension to General Synod next year. Kevin, should we talk about that? Let's talk about that. And I, I'm losing my hair daily over the the controversies now within not just the. Anglican communion, but down under. So let, let us know what you think so, is going to happen down there. Uh, it's, I, I need your American uh, viewers particularly to understand that the Anglican Church of Australia is not like the Episcopal Church. Uh, while we have a number of wayward bishops who seem to be pushing hard ahead now, it is actually because they recognize they may be losing uh, the fight across the board. Uh, so the General Synod um, was going to meet next year, and a while ago, I think we, we reported on this before. Well, hold the, on. Who, who attends the General Synod? Ah, so there are delegates from every diocese, or all the dioceses of, of Australia, uh, and the delegates are, are, are made in proportion to the number of ordained clergy. So uh, Sydney has a huge block, over, well over 30%, and the most important factor is now that the evangelicals uh, and associated conservatives, uh, genuine traditional conservatives, now um, have the majority in the General Synod. Uh, again, they've got more delegates in uh, in, in Melbourne now, uh, even in Perth, there were some there were some victories and so on. So so we hold the General now, Synod. That, of is, course, that is the opposite of the Episcopal Church where we uh, have absolutely. one or two yes. bishops living yes. that are conservative. So yes. Absolutely. So we've got this very interesting situation where you have a number of liberal bishops who want to push ahead with their, with their revi uh, revising agenda, and yet they've agreed together that the only way that they can actually do that formally is through the constitutional processes of the Anglican Church of Australia, which would be the general synod, or failing that, an opinion from the appellate tribunal, which is kind of a, a side roundaways way of doing it. That's how they got women bishops through, by asking a question of the appellate tribunal. Anyway, we, we all know it has to be done at general synod. Uh, and yet, um, many people were fearful of that conversation because they knew they would lose and they knew that it would be a, a defining moment for the church. So the standing committee of the general synod earlier this year decided to call special session, not a full session. A special session you just call when you want to do a particular piece of, of uh, business, but but no more. So they called the special session for next year because uh, we do need to get some work done. We need to do the final legislation around uh, uh, child protection and all, all those kinds of things. And they said, look, while we're there, we might as well have a discussion about this human sexuality stuff. You know, we'll, we'll endarbor our way through the whole thing, uh, but we won't actually make any decisions. Well, that, of course, uh, is just a way of avoiding the issue. Uh, are not dealing with it. And what's happened is that uh, sufficient signatures have now been raised uh, from members of General Synod to also request a special session where we'll actually have motions on this. So we're going to have that next year at General Synod. Uh, I'll be there and we'll, we'll bring you guys with you. 
and we'll win. Uh, we we won last time round. You'll remember sitting with the movers sure. of, of of emotion uh, that, that that censured the Scottish Episcopal Church on exactly these issues, uh, and I think we're in an even stronger position now in General Synod. So we'll win, and the Liberals know that we will win, which is why they're pushing ahead now. So here's what I expect to happen, Kevin. I expect to see a number of dioceses um, pass similar motions like this. I expect to see them also punted off to the appellate tribunal. I expect to see the appellate tribunal dither and dither and dither and not really give us anything clear. And so we'll arrive at General Synod. I expect to see General Synod speak clearly on this matter uh, and, and just say what it's always said for a long, long time on it. And then I think what you'll find is that the liberals will just do what they want to do anyway, because they really don't believe in the unity of the church uh, when it they, comes down to these matters. Now that happened 30 years ago here, in, 35 years ago here in America in the Episcopal yes. Church, yes. and they were brought right to trial, and they yes. had the trial, yes. and they said, listen, he didn't really violate the core doctrines <laughs> of the church. So yeah, we're yeah. going to let it pass. Letting that pass open the floodgates to uh, a secular liberal takeover of the Episcopal yes. Church. Yeah. Is that something that could happen in your Look, location? So uh, what, what I imagine would happen is that uh, if we got to pass General Synod and we'd been really, really cleared, it'd been quite established, and, and a bishop went ahead anyway, uh, then um, I expect you'd see a bishop up in front of this special, what's called the Special Tribunal, which is effectively the Disciplinary Committee. Um, if the disciplinary committee actually disciplined them, that would be wonderful. If they didn't, which is entirely possible, you and I know how these things work. I, I think do. what you would at that point see is the conservatives and the sufficient of them to make this effective. Just say, well, we have no confidence in the structures of the Anglican Church of Australia. We're not leaving the Anglican Church of Australia, but we have no confidence in it. So there's always talk of the split all the time. But I think what you're going to see is, is, the, is the, the localization of GAFCON or its equivalent in Australia. So I don't see the Diocese of Sydney at any point saying we are leaving the Anglican Church of Australia. In the same way that uh, many of us have said we haven't left the Anglican Communion. We're just meeting in a different way within the Anglican Communion. Uh, you'll see that the funds turned off, the tap for the funds are uh, totally turned off. Uh, you'll see a refusal to meet uh, with these people and you'll just let it all, all, all wither away. The Liberals in Australia do not have Trinity Wall Street to back to prop them up. Uh, um, and they're losing. Well, you don't know that. They may call up and say, hey, they may call you, up. Who knows? We know Trinity, you're in the middle of construction but and you've got all those projects going on. Send us aware. a couple hundred K, you know? But they're but they're aware they're aware of the shift. So, for example, in in the diocese of Melbourne at their synod last weekend, the diocese of Melbourne also issued a, a motion, effectively censuring Wangaratta, expressing sorrow about Wangaratta, uh, and also uh, expressing support for the disaffected um, Anglicans in New Zealand, where of course J. B. N. has just been consecrated uh, a bishop there of, of the new diocese. And very interestingly enough, um, Craig Dalton, who is an archdeacon in uh, Melbourne and a very prominent liberal. Um, he's spoken out before on, on, on this matter. He wrote a blog piece on his blog where he said this is now an existential crisis for, yes. for, for liberals. <laughs> they're they're recognizing yeah. it. Yeah. And yet they are they are digging in. They're saying we're not leaving. We, and all the usual, you know, we're, we're going to fight against hatred and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so what's really interesting is, is for the liberals, this is the gospel. And I think we just need to keep remembering that for the liberals, this is the gospel. Uh, and so uh, they, they are, many of them, principled on this matter. Uh, and so it's going to come down to the very end. And sitting over all of it is the Archbishop of Melbourne, uh, Philip Freer, who is the primate, who is, and I want to find a charitable way to say this, Kevin, um, there have been firmer chairs of committees and councils. That's good. That was, that was very diplomatic. Yes. I would not have so said I, that. So you I, did a very I good job. What you'll see, and I think, I think what you'll see is you'll see the sort of dithering. Um, is that a, is that a word Americans use? It's a word I'm going to oh, use. Yeah, we use it. Sure. That we saw from 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 uh, Williams. That we've seen from Welby. Just the refusal to implement firmly out of fear of the backlash uh, decisions that the bodies that they're purporting to lead and represent have have actually taken. So I wonder if what we're going to see in the Anglican Church of Australia, again, is what we've seen in the Anglican Communion writ large, which is that the unwillingness or the inability of, of the leadership 
to implement what the body has actually agreed on doing is actually going to lead ultimately to 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 further uh, division. Uh, division is coming now. I, I don't see anybody now who is uh, saying that they don't think there's going to be a split. Uh, even the liberals who are going, oh, you know, we're all about the unity and whatever. They, they, they wave the flag. After a while, they, it's too tiring for them. They put it down and they acknowledge the reality. But we are heading for some form of division. The question is, what will it be like? How will it be implemented? Uh, and... Um, uh, and what will the future look like? Uh, I don't think it's going to look like two separate Anglican, formal Anglican churches. I think it's going to look like a, a GAFCON within Australia, continuing on, and the formal structures looking more and more irrelevant. It's interesting. Big wins for the Liberals here in the Episcopal Church was the writer trial, was yeah. getting uh, Lambeth yeah. to have Indaba, was getting yes. you know every crisis and stuff like that to be averted. The Windsor Report; yes. they, they, those were actual victories for yes. uh, the Liberal Progressive Church because it just kept yeah. kicking the can down the road with no accountability. No yeah, accountability think, is a win for Liberals. But I think there's two differences now. I mean, no accountability obviously is the win, uh, but I think there's two differences now. One, uh, they had a much stronger base at the time when they mm -hmm. were pushing those things through than the Liberals here do. The Liberals here are losing, um, and two. We've watched that happen. We have, we have, I was just talking to somebody the other day. I said, I think you and I have been at this game, Kevin, in various ways for over 20 years. Maybe you yeah, longer. Sure. Little yeah. Bit. Yeah. yeah okay. we have, I mean, I, do you remember Stand Firm? That was quite a while ago, wasn't it? Uh, we documented. Yeah. We documented the decline of the Episcopal Church. We've seen things happen in the Church of England. We've watched Canada. We've watched New Zealand. We've seen how these guys operate. We're not fooled anymore. And we're calling them out on what it is. And that's why I think Australia will 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 look slightly different in the way that it's all worked out. There is a robustness and, and a clarity amongst the conservatives on the issues now and a clear communication of them that I, I haven't seen anywhere else uh, in inside a province of the Anglican community. Well, good, because we need a win. All right. It's been a long 20 years and. Uh, you know, GAFCON, big victory, but uh, it'd be nice to see an actual province say, stop, no, not here. Yep. Okay, yep. I well, want to thank... We'll yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I want to thank viewers for watching us. This has been Anglican Scripted episode, f I wrote this down, 544. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm David Holmes.